Hi, I'm Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review. And this is the second in my series of rewatching all the 007 movies we're going to talk about from Russia with Love. On the last podcast, talking about 007 James Bond movies, when I reviewed Dr. No, I talked about how I was a fan from basically birth, because my parents were dragging me to uh, the drive-in in (laughs) in the back seat. I was watching these movies before I even understood what was going on. But this one came out, another one, before I was born. Um, In 1963, the sequel to Dr. No was uh, immediately greenlit after it did so well the year before. And they doubled the budget, doubled the pay to Sean Connery, and doubled down on everything that is 007. Getting more things right building on what they did in the first movie. But I have to say, rewatching it now, it's not one of my favorite Bond films, and I'll tell you why as we get into it, but it does a lot of things really, really right and has aged very, very, very well. One of the reasons um, that watching it now is just, it it feels disjointed. It it feels in places, and it's got a nearly two-hour runtime, but in places it's like, let's go to the gypsy camp and do this, and all of a sudden the war breaks out in the gypsy camp, and it... (laughs) um, it turns out that the movie was rushed. They they were not able to finish it in the time that they really wanted because they wanted to push up the release because the first movie was such a hit. A $2 million budget. They filmed it in Istanbul and other great places, and it went on to grow $78, $79 million, and in the long run is a classic by any stretch of the imagination. Um so it was a huge financial success. I mean, on the on the likes of, uh, you know, a Blair Witch kind of success. They made a movie for $2 million, and it grossed almost 80 <laughs> It's huge. Um, a lot of it was filmed at Pinewood Studios again. Um, you know, you've got M returning. It was the first appearance of Q, Desmond Llewellyn, who played Q for 36 years and 17 movies, made his debut because the guy that played the weapons agent in Dr. No wasn't available. Yeah, how about that for a lucky career move? Um, and overall, the movie is is a lot more dense in plot, closer to the novels, where it is just one thing after another. Uh, movie opens with you think they're stalking James Bond, and it turns out it was somebody wearing a, a 007 mask because they're training Spectre is training their agents to take out Bond for well everything he did in Doctor No, right? Um, so that's where we first meet the one, the only, Robert Shaw, looking nothing like his role, uh, what, 13 years later, 15 years later in Jaws. He's tall, he's good looking, he's well built, he's the cream of the crop of an Irish killer that working for the bad guys, and they pick him to eventually take on James Bond. And he spends the rest of the movie shadowing James Bond, even saving 007 in a few instances. But it's all part of this grand scheme to kill Bond and embarrass him and the British government. And, and so anyway... It gets into a plot within a plot within a plot because uh, Kleb, Rosa Kleb, she's a Spectre operative. She used to work for Soviet counterintelligence. She recruits Tatiana Romanova, (laughs) I love the names, um, to basically bed James Bond. She thinks, Romanova thinks that she's still working for Kleb, who's still working for Soviet counterintelligence, not really knowing that she's working for the evil Spectre. So... That begins this little relationship romance that Bond and Romanov have going on. And then you've got the Kleb thing going on and Robert Shaw's character tailing them. And it cuts back every once in a while to some of the other things going on. It really is, like I said, um, they go to a gypsy camp to investigate some things and literally a war breaks out. (laughs) And what I, what it, one of the things I didn't like as much in this movie is the action scenes are just not quite there. The original reviews when the movie came out, electrifying action scenes. Yes, but by what we watch today, they're pretty sad action scenes. They, they seem to be rushed, really thrown together really quickly. Um, as someone who's watched all the movies and is a fan of film, I'm probably catching on to this more than the average person. But overall, like the, the action just was okay. It, it, the whole movie feels a little rushed and a little disjointed. It, it still has that James Bond sheen to a certain extent that they had kind of created for the whole thing, looking very professional and posh and the great locations and the clothes and the cars and all that. All that stuff doubled down on from the first movie. They had double the budget, a whopping $2 million budget. Budget in 1962-63. Um, 
But obviously this catapulted things in, in, in the franchise into bigger and better things because next up on our list is Goldfinger, which I can't wait. That's one of my all-time favorites. So a few other things. Um, I thought Sean Connery was great. I thought all the actors were great. I thought the plot twists were there. It's, it's just really convoluted for a movie, but that's kind of one of the strengths to all the 007 movies, that they're, they're very, very heavily plotted, lots of intrigue, lots of plot twists, and that's what I love. I just don't think this was handled as well as later movies were, I think. Again, and not knowing this watching the movie, but finding out after, it was rushed. They did not finish it in the time that they had originally had allotted. This was rushed into theaters. They didn't get to finish everything like they wanted to. And that's been the death knell for a lot of movies. But in this case, it worked because for the time, the movie did quite well and just kept building on this franchise that has become, you know, other than Marvel, the biggest franchise of all time. Uh, and Harry Potter, I think. Um, Daniela Bianchi, I don't know how, if I'm saying her name, played Tatiana Romanoff, thought she was great in the role. Um, I loved Robert Shaw, Bernard Lee back as M, um, and, and Lois Maxwell as Moneypenny. I, I loved the repartee that Moneypenny has with Bond throughout the early Bond films, and this was another great one. It, it just, you know, it, they just have a great chemistry together. It just works. And the fact that Desmond Llewellyn got this equipment officer job, head of the Q branch, just because the guy that played it in the last movie couldn't make it, 17 movies later, you know, he was Q through all the big years of James Bond. So I'm really enjoying going back through this box that I've had since 2012 and re-watching all the James Bond movies. As I said, the catalyst for this was Sean Connery dying a week and a half, two weeks ago, and I'm going to slowly... I wanted to do this anyway before No Time to Die came out, and when it was coming out in, what, November, I was going to watch these a few months ago, but when it got pushed back to next year, I figured I'll just take my time.